Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in pentatonic parallel part six, melody and motive, bright and shadow. In today's stream, we came in with multiple ideas having watched a video on melody. It's from a famous series called the New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts, Leonard Bernstein. And we took Here is the New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein. And we took copious notes. On what is a melody. So in our napkin diagram here are all our notes we decided that what we wanted to do with that was experiment with very short motive melodies and Bernstein uses the word motive which we've also heard as motif and including middle low and high pitches of notes and include what he called the one two three approach uh, which is you start with a statement then you repeat it with a slight variation and then you take off and do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, the other idea that we came in with was uh, continuing to look at um, how we combine our 2772 and our 3443 scales using the metaphor of shadow projection. One of the things we noticed in doing that since the last stream is that we were talking to people about this idea. We got more ideas, especially for the visualization. And also, every time we come back to composing, it gives us perspectives on new perspectives on familiar issues. And I don't mean musical issues either. So the project for today was we have these 12, 6, 8, etc. note sets. And this is what we had from last time. And um, we started to edit this a bit because this is going to become kind of a reference diagram for us further in making music visualizations and we said for any one scale so let's take the 2772 scale the notes that are used we're going to call the shadow set because they cast the, sh the light up here comes down it's blocked by the note and cast the shadow so C is a shadow and D is a shadow so that's the shadow set at the same time, for any one scale, the notes not used are its bright set. So, for example, D flat is not used, and the light shines all the way down here, and it's bright. So, we listed the bright notes. Basically, if there's six shadow notes, there have to be six bright. In the 3443, four, three, there's eight shadow, there have to be four bright. And we even experimented in snippet one with a three note scale and that meant there had to be nine in the bright set so we're getting kind of explicit with the bright and the shadow the bright and the shadow in any 12 note in any scale it's going to be 12 or less in fact we actually use one up here we have the 12 note scale and everything is a shadow and there are no bright notes whatsoever in it so cool so we kind of got our terminology. Now we said we wanted to work with that five note projection. The scales can be projected one at a time or on top of each other and if you project the 2772 and the 3443 the interesting thing is you get five notes that are C, G, that are basically covered by both scales. So it's like an extra dark shadow. So we're calling that the five note projection. And we listed the notes, there's five there. And that means there have to be seven in the bright set. And then wonder of wonders, while we were looking at our, um, what these notes are, we noticed accidentally that they are also the same as the C72 major scale. And we thought, oh my Lord, what does that mean? Well, it turned out our plan was to construct a subset of the 2772 and 3443 chords selected by that overlap. 
And it turns out that if you're only allowed, if you're only allowed to use C, G, A, B flat, B, even when you go to all of this stuff, here, here's the C7-2 major scale. You said, you said, well, that's the same as the five note scale. Yeah, yeah. And it has a lot of notes in it, C7-2. However, we're not allowed to use notes that aren't in the shared five note scale. So any chord, for example, that has a D in it, like, like that one, that cannot be used. So A, two, three cannot be used. And then we did the same thing looking at the three, four, four, three scale, saying anything that had a D in it can't be used as an example. And oh, also anything that had an E or an E flat can't be used. And we had a lot of things with E's. So, and you can see that here because E and E flat, they're in, they're, they're in the 2, 7 and the 3, 4, or we call it the blue and the red. So they can't be used down here. So any chord that has an E flat or an E or a D can't be used. And the upshot of all that is when we finally got around we kind of made a new master reference and the result was we have five notes, we have one tonic, one dominant, and three ambivalent chords. That's it. And so we composed with that and we created what we called musical snippet number three. And this is what the common chords and notes sounds like. That's, that was what we had to work with today. And this is what we came up with. So the interesting thing about this structure is, let's see if we made any notes. We did. We kind of, we started to make a line diagram and we were saying, well, the first thing, which is on your mark, the one, two, three, on your mark, get set, go. Um, it had two notes, B and A, and that would became our th our motif, our motive. Do do do, and then you're supposed to repeat that for part two, but with a slight variation. Do do do, and then part three. Now you start taking off. So we kind of did that. So we feel like we did a one, two, three pretty well. And um, then you get into quote-unquote development and then variations and then then a wrap-up. So this is a rough start to our, our line diagram. And in fact we need and we need to review what we've done, make, a, make an official line diagram, look at merging some parts from one and two into three and maybe doing some more visualization because that's fun. So we spent a long time on this and especially interesting was the idea of working with two note melodies or motifs i mean this was this is it, like this is it and how do you make that interesting and the answer is well you need to add some harmony in there and well thank goodness we had this reference area over here to say what chords were we allowed to use so the cadences are on the cadence line, the motive is, or melody is on the motive line, and basically this arpeggio is just a way to kind of put a little movement into here as we hit, hit the cadence. And that we've carefully labeled every note, whether it's, it's an urge, this is called a double urge note because it is an urge note in both scales. This is a regular urge, it's only an urge note in one scale. And uh, we kind of worked out a new vocabulary and how we didn't want to have all this cascading double naming of note functions throughout over here. So we kind of collapsed it. So we did a lot of good work there. And the, the whole 
concepts here, remember a key concept of this series is using two scales together in one composition. And here we go. This is what we've got so far. And we'll turn the mic off so that we can listen to it and enjoy it. So that's it. We look forward to seeing you in the next stream. Thank you for your attention and interest and curiosity. And as always, keep on streaming.